you know, if you think of like all the thousands of venture capital firms, almost all of them are like structured the same way. They all have a kind of like a management fee carry. They, they like just like legally, they're like structured the same yeah. way. And then if you think of all these like incubators, maybe there's hundreds of incubators, almost all of them are structured completely uniquely. Like there's almost like no two incubators that are like even yeah. remotely the same. Yeah. Like, why is this? Yeah, I've thought quite a lot about this question because you know we we are one of those, and we have yeah. an, we have an unusual structure and one that took. And, and by the way, for full transparency to our you know viewers, I'm a small shareholder and entrepreneur yeah, first, yeah, we very happy that. shareholder. Yeah, well, we're, very, yeah. we're very happy yeah. to yeah. to have you as a shareholder. Um, I well, so here's here's the way I think about it. So I think just the the first thing I would say is that in general, venture capital funds are, are trying to sell. Um, a commodity, capital, at uh, a market price. And, you know, I, yeah, there's a bit of price discovery, but broadly, this is a fairly simple trade of cash for equity. And yeah. you, know, you determine the price by a competitive process. And so, in a way, it sort of makes sense that there would be a single optimal structure to perform that, like, somewhat standardized transaction. Most incubators, the, um, the pitch to their investors is, we're not doing that. Like, yeah, of course, well, there'll be a capital element of what we do, but the way we earn our equity is not just the capital. It's some other thing like work. It's operational work in some way. And that varies across incubators. But because of that, I think you end up with a lot of different structures because there's there's much less there's much more messiness there's much more nuance in what that thing is that is not capital so i know but but if you think of like most if you go let, let's say most companies are different like you know if you think of facebook is different than salesforce which is different open yeah. well open ai may be the weird exception actually <laughs> but they're like they're structured similar they're delaware yeah. c corps they've got like common and preferred like they're all kind of like structured yeah. in a similar way roughly and then you know, eventually they may go public, and then when you go public, they're all structured basically the same way. Yeah, um, you know, there's a board and this. Yeah, you know, but then when you go to like the incubator, it's like, oh, we got this, and then there's just this side fund over here, and then oh, it's yeah. weird, and well, it's like, it's I, like I everything gets like so crazy. It's, it like, it's like you, you can't even put it on like a slide. You should. Sure, you know? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see our structure diagram. Yeah, I mean, I think some of it is that because it's weird, it doesn't like. You know, like broadly, there's a reason that fund structure is these GPL stru LP structures and not as companies, and it's largely yep. tax, you know, tax driven and in a in a way that makes total sense. Um, and I think because th that model doesn't usually work for um, incubators because the operating cost is much larger as a percentage of the overall yeah. outlay than normal. But then, like if you structure as a company, usually that puts you in a weird tax position that you're sort of like overpaying tax relative to what you could achieve yes. in, a, in a fund structure. And so you, you sort of end up with these weird hybrids because it's so weird and frankly niche. You're right, there's hundreds of them, but like collectively we're all – pretty small and so correct no yeah. no no government is like you know what we need to come up with this really great way of like creating a standardized structure that recognizes how incubators work um although actually the uk is just launching something that looks quite promising uh that i'll, I'll come back to you on whether it works um but so i think it's partly just that it's that it's a bit weird and it, it doesn't fit in either box um i i think there's like a second thing though which is maybe a bit more controversial but uh, you wrote about this like six years ago, and I wrote about it too in my newsletter six years ago, which is like, I think a lot of VC isn't that ambitious. I don't mean that yes, the people aren't right. really good yeah. or that they're not trying to succeed, but like broadly, most VCs don't see their job as sort of like innovating on the process of venture capital. They see their job as like finding great companies and giving them capital. Yeah. And interestingly, I would argue, and you know, I think you argued the same thing when you first wrote about this, that private equity is actually like more ambitious on average. Like people have innovated more on the model in private equity. And that's partly why you have a bunch of private equity management companies that are public companies, that's uh, right. where you don't really in VC. And in I VC do, it's, it's always like they never take their own advice. Right. Like, like the one advice would be like, well, it would be I don't know. Would you really like if you're a VC really want to like fund a company that has more than two CEOs? So like right. probably not, right? Right. Um, would you want to? Well, you want to fund a company that takes outside money and they're willing to sell their equity. But like VCs, well, at least the LLC, they're not selling the LLC usually right. to anybody, right? They're not like taking dilution and stuff in the LLC. Even with their own employees, they don't get like the employees don't get in it. They get they get you know 
carrying the fun, but not right. in the management cup, but a, right. and you know, there's so many things where like, you know, VCs never go public, but they tell like Bill Gurley tells everyone to go public, but like, he's never even thought probably right. about taking benchmark public, right. right? It's like, they never take their own advice. Yeah, exactly. And so I think there's just something about like, I don't know, like there's something maybe that attracts people to incubation models, which is like a different impulse that attracts people to VC that is like, it is this sort of like company building one where you, you sort of want to exp- maybe to a fault you want to experiment with the structure um, because you're trying to like, you know, I I still believe that, you know, one of the things I love about what we do in talent investing is it is weird. It's trying to create this new asset class in talent. And, you know, I'd like to think that's a really ambitious thing to try to do. And so, you you know, you, you end up with like a lot of structural innovation to try and make that, that, that happen. What, what, are there other like quote unquote incubators or other types of like weird companies you look to and you like, cause there's, there's not a lot of like super successful ones that are out there. Um, mm-hmm. So are there ones you're like, Oh wow. I, I like, I, I studied these guys. I've learned something. I've taken these things away from them. I mean, I think there's like, there's clearly a ton to learn from the successes of things that look a little bit, like this, I mean, obviously, Y Combinator is not, not yes. really an incubator, but like, I mean, just an extraordinary, extraordinary company and an extraordinary. Success. One of the great things about Y Combinator, like if you really think about Y Combinator as a company as as opposed to a venture capital firm, is most people who can who know Y Combinator can't name one person who works at Y Combinator. Yeah, right. Like that is amazing. Like that just shows you the the value of what they're doing. Like they're not actually like a, a, a bunch of smart collection of people. Of course, they have super smart people there, but they've actually built a real company. Yeah, well, AngelList and- would be the same, right? They built like a real company. Like yeah. you can't you can't just like point like most people don't, don't can't know one person works at AngelList. Like they don't know the name. Well, this comes back to the structural question, right? Because like a big reason to structure incubators as companies is the idea that they have some sort of enduring equity value that is yes. distinct from the like track record of the star investors. And and the truth is, most of the time in VC, that's just not true. Like Correct. you know, like and you know, we've seen that, right? You know, I won't name names, but you know. There are clearly top tier firms today that didn't exist 20 years ago and top tier firms from 20 years ago that are no longer top tier, right? And yeah. um, but actually YC has created this enduring equity value uh, precisely because it doesn't rely on like any one superstar. Obviously the people that work there are smart, super are exceptionally smart, yeah. smart and like yeah. exceptionally yeah, capable. But, yeah. but you're right, that's not where the value comes from. And you know, if I if you go to a different asset class, I don't know. Like, and by the way, in YC, like I I believe right now, if you take the top five people out of YC, and uh, obviously they're all amazing, and it would be it would it would be a negative, but YC would still be amazing. Yeah. Um, whereas if you take the top five people out of any venture capital firm right now, like it would go under immediately. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that that that's the you know that's the dream in a way of like these models, which Correct. is like you yeah. actually have something that is. Um, it's like a real company. Like obviously you take top five people out of Google. It's the same thing. Like Google still be incredible, right? right, Like Apple, like you just, you just go through the list. Yeah. And you know, going back to your like advice that VCs don't follow, that's almost the definition of a lifestyle business, right? Correct. (laughs) correct. It's a lifestyle business. Exactly. Venture capital is a lifestyle business. Yeah. What about um? Have you followed IAC at, at all? Because they're, they're in a weird way, they're kind of an incubator. They spin things out, they start things, they acquire things on the side. They they're like they're like a really weird company. They're they're probably the weirdest tech company out there. That's true. Yeah, I I I mean I I know I know a little bit about them, but yeah, I haven't followed it closely. But but you know there are other. I mean the. Maybe something a bit like that would be like NASPERS or, or something. Oh, like, NASPERS is a great example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a great example. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think these models like, you know, Vista or, or Constellation, where you have this like central, uh, you like, you really have a thesis about how you use your yeah. like, central um, services to, to drive value is, is really interesting. Um, right. Constellation Software is a great example of just like an incredibly successful company. Yeah. Which, which even though like you know, it's reasonably well known, is still like underrated. Definitely, like it's it correct. Should, yeah, it most most, like- most people in tech haven't heard of them. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. even in tech, they haven't heard of them. Yeah. So you know, I think there's there's a, there's a lot of these things, but again, like they, um, it's it's funny how much like in traditional VC, it's um, as you say, like a lot of it's about creating brand around your superstars, and maybe that like. It's just sort of a very different set of incentives. 